been three years since a Moorcroft Wyoming man went missing from Garing. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, on July 6th, 2019, Chance Engelbert went missing. He was last seen on surveillance video, confirming that Chance walked north of 10th Street and cut west through Terrytown. His cell phone last pings near a tower by Western Travel Terminal, and an incoherent text message was the last anybody had seen or heard from him. Massive search efforts commenced several days later, but to no avail. Investigators say the case remains active, but there have been minimal leads and zero solid leads for authorities to find out what happened that fateful Saturday night. If anybody has information on what happened to Chance Engelbert, please contact the Gearing Police Department at 308 436 5088. Well, a military man was arrested following a scary incident where one vehicle was pushed into a moving train by another vehicle over the holiday weekend. Deputies were called to the BNSF crossing on Highway L79E just west of Minotaur, finding a Jeep Cherokee had been struck by an eastbound train. Investigators say they determined the Jeep had been stopped at the crossing and was rear-ended by a Toyota pickup. The 22-year-old driver of the Jeep and her younger sister were not injured, while the driver of the Toyota, 53-year-old David Bowman of Minotaur, sustained minor facial injuries due to not wearing a seatbelt. Bowman was arrested on suspicion of second offense driving under the influence, careless driving, open alcohol container, and no seatbelt. Both vehicles were a total loss. We'll have more news right after this. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether it is building, buying, or renovating, we have the home loan or home equity line of credit to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Formal charges have been filed against a South Dakota man who fired his gun during a June altercation at the Sheridan County Livestock Sale Barn. Last week in Sheridan County, 44-year-old Gilbert Grooms was charged with attempted first-degree murder, three counts of use of a firearm to commit a felony, first-degree assault, and terroristic threats. Investigators say following a verbal altercation, Grooms retrieved a shotgun from his vehicle and fired and shot the 35-year-old victim multiple times. Grooms is free after posting 10% of his quarter million dollar bond. Doug Warner with the Nebraska Attorney General's office has been appointed as special county attorney for prosecution of this case. Well, with the passage of the Independence Day holiday, Goshen County is now under stage one fire restrictions. County Fire Warden Bill Law says commissioners have approved implementation of the restrictions and will continue until further notice. Under the restrictions, discharge of fireworks and outdoor fires are prohibited in unimproved areas. And while controlled burns on rural properties are allowed, it's not advised. Yesterday, all three fire chiefs in Morrill County, including Bayard, Bridgeport and Broadwater, also announced a fire ban, citing high temperatures and exceedingly dry conditions as part of the perfect storm for large grass fires. And Governor Pete Ricketts, in accordance with a proclamation from the White House, announced that all U.S. and Nebraska flags are to be flown at half-staff 
to honor the victims of the shooting that took place in Highland Park, Illinois on July 4th. Flags will be flown at half staff until sunset on July 9th in honor and remembrance of all of those victims. Well, still to come, we'll head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society to meet their featured pet of the week. Why love a rain garden? Let me count the ways. Rain gardens contain and filter water runoff while recharging our underground water supply. They provide habitat for birds, bees, and beneficial insects. Native perennials give four seasons of color and texture, beautifying a home while increasing its value. Established gardens are low maintenance, low water landscape features. Colorful, functional, and sustainable. Rain gardens, brought to you by Tri-City Stormwater. Our water, our responsibility. This is KNEV.TV weather from the KNEV Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Well, an isolated thunderstorm or two will be around the area here early this evening. Otherwise, muggy, cloudy uh, conditions going to remain in effect through the overnight hours. We'll see some decrease in clouds, though, and a little more sun tomorrow, which is going to bump our temperatures up. So more storms are expected tomorrow, though. Then uh, storm chances are going to decrease, not go away, but decrease through the weekend as it turns hot here across the area. Yesterday, we hit 97, a morning low of 64. Nothing in the rain gauge yesterday. We're still about a quarter of an inch above normal for the month, but that pales to that 2.7 inches below normal we are for the year. You can see a couple areas. We have flood watches out for portions of South Dakota and northeastern Wyoming. Too much rain in those areas. And severe thunderstorm watches out now for northeastern portions of Colorado. That's where the better severe weather threat's going to be this evening. Warmer 80s in the eastern half of the state. We have cooler 70s thanks to cloud cover here across our region. A few areas in the low 80s. Winds out of the east-southeast at about 5 to 15, gusting at times over 20, gustier in some of those showers and storms. Well, our severe weather threat tonight is for south of us primarily in northeastern Colorado, the adjacent areas of southwestern Nebraska, northwestern Kansas, and then portions of Wyoming there up into Montana. Same area off to the north tomorrow and again going to get picked on on Friday as Montana and the D northern Dakotas looks like they're going to be under the gun for severe weather for the next two or three days. Here, an isolated thunderstorm or two can, can't rule out some strong ones with it if they do form. Could be capable of hail and gusty winds, heavy rain likely with the isolated storms as well. Lows overnight, how about 50s to near 60 degrees. Tomorrow, we set the stage for another round of showers and thunderstorms with some more sun. That's going to destabilize the atmosphere more. And then by late afternoon, here come a round of showers and thunderstorms across the region. Again, they're going to be capable of producing some hail and definitely heavy rain. Plenty of moisture in the air out there. High temperatures tomorrow, closer to 90, upper 80s to low 90s out there. And then as we look at precip-wise over the next 36 hours, again, don't focus on one specific area. Just know you may pick up nothing or you may pick up an inch or more, depending on where you're at, if you get underneath some of those heavier showers and storms. Tonight, then, partly cloudy. A stray shower or storm, I think, in the Scotts Bluff area. Can't rule one out. 63 for a low. Tomorrow, scattered afternoon thunderstorms. It'll be warmer, back to near 90. Our seven-day forecast, speaking of warmer, how about 103 on Saturday and 101 on Sunday? A very hot weekend. A few storms around Monday, then back into the 90s, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week is the hot and uh, mainly dry weather continues. I really like how our OB department takes our limited amount of, of doctors and turns it into a strength. Even though we only have a couple of people, you get to know them well over your entire pregnancy. We have two state-of-the-art labor rooms that are new with our last edition. We have a couple of very nice postpartum rooms also right here in the hospital so they can get as much time with mom and baby as possible. This week's featured pet of the week, we meet Monstro, a cute pup who's in need of a great forever home. Hi. 
This is Monstro, a one-year-old terrier pit bull mix who's been at the Panhandle Humane Society since mid-May. Staff says he loves to go on runs and hikes. Monstro is partially house-trained and has a big heart. His adoption cost is $150, and that includes his neutering, microchipping, and vaccinations. Plus, whoever adopts this outdoorsman will also receive a $25 Murdoch's gift card, so you can start spoiling him right away. Welcome to Kelly's, home of the Valley's best selection of wine, spirits, and beer. Whether you're brand loyal to the tried and true brew or really enjoy trying something different and new, Kelly's has something for everyone. Family owned and operated and right on your way on West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Kelly's Liquor, if you can't find it at Kelly's, it's not worth drinking. Let's take a peek at what's happening on your midweek community calendar. The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. First State Bank is now Riverstone Bank. 
Community strong with the same people you know and trust. Panhandle Trails Intercity Public Transit, based in Alliance, Nebraska, is the only intercity bus serving Nebraska Panhandle communities and Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Panhandle Trails operates a regularly scheduled bus service, assisting you in making connections with Greyhound Bus Partners, regional airports, healthcare, employment and education opportunities, shopping, family, friends, and more. Panhandle Trails serves the general public of all ages and offers accessible transportation for those with special mobility needs. Let Panhandle Trails help you make your connection. Call 308-761-8747. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. And finally tonight, organizers of a medical marijuana legalization campaign in Nebraska say they are in danger of missing their signature goal to qualify for the November general election ballot. Nebraskans for Medical Marijuana says it still needs to gather thousands of signatures ahead of Thursday's submission deadline set by the state. The campaign suffered a major blow when one of its top donors passed away, forcing organizers to rely primarily on volunteers. The campaign needs valid signatures from 7% of Nebraska's registered voters, roughly 87,000 voters, to appear on the ballot. Voters would decide in November whether to legalize the drug for medicinal purposes. Some prominent elected officials, including Governor Pete Ricketts, remain firmly opposed to legalization and have actively fought the measure. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.